Hello everybody, Prowl here, and today we're doing a tutorial. It's probably been a year and a half since I've done a tutorial, but on the Survival Empire world here, everybody liked my raid farm, which is behind me. And I have a way to not only make this awesome and easy for you to make, but we can actually make it a little bit better based on some things that I learned and a little bit less messy looking up top. So let's hop into a fresh world and do a tutorial on a raid farm. And before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to Silent Whispers video about raid farms and from the Analyzing Minecraft Discord channel, both of which I got information about raid farms from. This was my first time messing with them. So before I could work up my own design, I needed to learn a little bit about their mechanics and how they work and that sort of thing, of which I will actually let you guys know plenty of that information as we go through and build this, because I want you to understand some of the mechanics and how it works too, so you can better troubleshoot or change the design to fit your own needs. First thing you'll need to do after, of course, fighting your way up through here, because you'll, you'll probably have a handful of pillagers in the tower, maybe some up top here as well, is you're going to need to block the spawning spots of the raid tower first. So there should be a spawning spot right here. So I'm just going to elevate that by one block and put a leaf block right here. Now for this spot right here, you do need to make sure that you block all spots going all the way down to spawn, right? So what you may want to do is stand on the spot here first before we knock everything out, knock out this floor, knock out this floor and knock out this floor. Go ahead and put a leaf block right here. If you prefer to keep your floors in, that's fine. You just need to have a leaf block on top of each one of them like this. That will keep any spawns from happening there. And then we'll go back and put this back just the way we found it. Now those spawn spots are blocked going all the way down. And if we go eight blocks in this direction, eight blocks in this direction, and then connect those two corners up, those are going to be the other leaf blocks. So this one is actually ends up being just over the edge here. This one over here ends up being just over the edge right here. And then this one is the intersecting one of the two. Now at that point, all of these spots, they're all blocked. No pillagers can spawn anywhere inside this tower. And we're gonna take advantage of that. So mobs on Bedrock Edition, they spawn in on the negative, negative corner. If I move in this direction, you'll see my X coordinate in the top left hand corner of the screen continues to move further into the negative. If I move in this direction, it also continues to move further into the negative before the Z coordinate, the third coordinate. So that means right here is where the mobs gonna spawn. We wanna take advantage of that spot. So we can either knock the mobs out this direction or this direction, and I prefer to keep it more towards the center of the tower. So we're gonna mark them out and knock them out in this direction right here, which means that we need to make a little drop chamber. I'm just gonna surround this with blocks right here. I'm gonna make it all glass just so I can see in. It doesn't have to be glass, that is just my preference. We're gonna put a glass block right here and then a glass block right here. What you're gonna see if I knock out this leaf block and, and pop back, that pillager, it's gonna spawn. It's gonna immediately drop off the block. And there he went. He started up, he fell down. Now what we're gonna wanna do is make a trident killer. We're gonna go down, I think three blocks will be good. So I'm gonna knock this little area out. We're gonna come down one and then one more. And we're gonna put a little floor right, oops, right there, just like that. A little two by two thingy majigger. Uh, we can knock out these stairs, that's fine. And for now, we should probably go through and surround this little platform so we can work with it. Now, if you've never made a trident killer before, they are extremely easy. Um, you're just going to need uh, four pistons, four observers, four powered rails, and just a few solid blocks. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to place these in a kind of alternating fashion. So it'll go to the right, to the right, to the right, and to the right. So you'll kind of see they kind of alternate back and forth. Uh, we can actually fill in with solid blocks all around those, just like this. Um, we then do want solid blocks on top of each one of the pistons, just to make life a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna knock these out for you guys. So solid block, solid block, solid block, solid block. In each corner, put your powered rail like that, 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 and that. And then you're going to want an observer looking at each one of those rails. So an observer is looking that way. See his face is looking at that. Face is looking at this. Face is looking at this and face is looking at this. Now, if I grab a lever and I turn this thing on, that locks it, that's the off position. If I flip it here, it is in the on position. 
And as you can see, the observers are looking at the rail. It sends a signal out to this right here. That gets power. That powers this rail. That sees it. It sends power out this way and it just kind of creates this infinite loop. And then you can surround this with whatever you want. If you want to kind of see everything work, that's always kind of fun to do. I always like that. We can cover it up and we will want a few tridents in there. Their durability does not matter because the tridents will not take damage in here. Throw in one or two, whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter. We'll throw in three. Uh, we'll close this off. We'll turn this on and you should see if I back up. We watch the pillagers spawn in here. They'll fall down and they'll die. See him taking damage and he's dead. And I got the bad omen effect from that. Now these guys, they don't drop a lot of experience points. They really only drop the crossbows and the arrows. So nothing really important here. We're not gonna worry about item collection, XP collection. We're not gonna worry about any of that here. It's gonna leave it as is, it's not important. Now, just to reiterate, this farm will work regardless of what sim distance you play. Most people play on simulation distance four because that's just the default. If you don't know a sim distance you play on, you're, you're probably on sim distance four. But this farm, the way we do it, it'll work for everybody. Now, from this center spot right here at the top of your uh, pillager outpost, it doesn't necessarily have to be the center, but to make life easy for everybody, we're going to do the center. We're going to go up 30 blocks from this spot. Again, this will make it sim four compatible to where we will get these guys spawning in here able to drop down in a chamber and not despawn and once you're at y level 115 we view scaffolding specifically here because mobs the raid farm mobs they cannot spawn on scaffolding they also can't spawn on the leaves we mentioned that earlier so these are the only two blocks that you're allowed to use anywhere now a lot of us like to have a little afk platform this is going to be your afk area so if you want to make this place safe, I know a lot of you like to have a chest here, right? That's fine. Put some leaves over top of it. Uh, if you want to have a crafting table or something, that's fine. Make sure you have or an ender chest. Make sure you have a leaf over top of it. Um, also, if you're the type that likes to have a little like glass barrier around you because I don't know, you're scared that a phantom's going to swoop in and get you or something, right? That's fine. Build yourself a little glass block box just like this. And as long as you cover the top of it with leaves, you're spawn proof. You're safe. You don't have to worry about it. And you can easily get in and out via the scaffolding right here, which is nice as well. Now, for us to build right now, though, we're actually going to go up further. We're going to go up 20 blocks from this point right here to actually start our raid farm. So we're at Y level 115 now. We want to go to Y level 135. OK, this is our center point at Y level 135. Now, anywhere that you see me use one of these blocks, a smooth stone, just know it can be any solid block. So if you want this thing to be decorated, whatever it may be, that's cool. Use it. That's OK. Uh, we're going to make another one of those trident killers you saw us make down there. We're going to make one up here as well. Do it the exact same way. One small modification, though, instead of using the powered rails, use redstone dust. The reason we're going to use redstone dust here is sometimes ravagers, they'll they'll spawn right here, which is good. We want them to. But if somehow they like glitch upwards or jump and the tridents or, or the pistons are moving too fast, they could get stuck up here for a while. And we don't want that to happen. Also, sometimes these mobs here, they'll jump and if the the pistons are moving too quickly they can actually kind of stay stuck up here so if we use the redstone dust instead just to slow it down a touch as you can see it gives plenty of time for the mobs to actually fall down in here and it's not really going to change the amount of time it takes to kill them by too much it's not going to be a big deal now, if you're enjoying this video and you enjoy the channel, please click the like button. It helps out a ton. Click the subscribe button so you get notified every single time a new video comes out. And I implore you to check out the Survival Empire series. It is my series where I'm building up two large kingdoms at war with each other, trying to expand their empire. There's going to be all sorts of crazy stuff. There's going to be a huge battlefield. There's going to be TNT exploding builds. There might even be viewers or members or that sort of thing actually participating in the battles themselves as well. So make sure you keep a lookout for that series and click that like and subscribe button. Let's get back to the video. Now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to build up one higher here because we want to make sure that any mobs that kind of like leak into here, we don't want them to have a way to think that they can jump back up here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to bring these platforms out like this just to give us uh, ourselves some additional spawning spots and then we're going to build up the corners just going all the way around don't skip the corners on this uh, because you you would need to fill it in anyway just kind of go around just like this 
Now, at this point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some signs and just kind of build up the middle right here. So I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Now I'm going to put one bucket of water here, 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 and here. And the reason I put it in just one corner instead of two is it actually pushes everything over to a side and it pushes everything over to the opposite side. So you see these ones will get pushed to the left. They'll always get pushed to the left. It's going to make it less likely that mobs are going to bump up against each other as they get pushed in here. So just a, another little tip to make things slightly more efficient. We're going to go ahead and we're going to build this up three more all the way around. Now to make things easier on yourself before you continue, you might want to go ahead, just throw in your tridents now. One, two, three again should be should be fine. And we're going to be making a place for lava to go now. So we're going to go ahead at the third block up. We're going to put a sign and we're going to sign here, sign here, sign here and sign here. That actually blocks up these four spots right there. And then what we can do is sign, 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 and sign, sign, get one bucket of lava, place it on top of any of these signs there in the middle. Bam. So now what will happen is when a Ravager spawns in here, like so, they'll get pushed into the middle here. And he's just going to get stuck in this lava right there because the Ravagers, they have a big problem getting stuck here and you would significantly slow down your raid farm if you don't kill the Ravagers in this way. So we're just going to get rid of them. Um, if they have a rider on top, a lot of times that rider is going to die. So what we're going to do is to keep them from floating up all crazy like that. We're actually just going to cover the top just like this and that would take care of it. Now, technically this thing would be close to functional, but we have a couple of small things that we still want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around. We're going to cover everything here with an additional layer of blocks, just like this. We're going to take it all the way around and then we'll cover these spots too. And then remember, these are corners. I think that's where our water is, right? Yeah, that's where our water is. We need to cover all this as well. We're going to go around here and then we're going to want to double thick everything through here too. That leaves this top layer right here. We're actually going to bring it all up one additional block as well. Um, this will make sure that our mobs that are on top of the Ravager can't glitch through. So go ahead and bring all of this up by two. And just to make sure no Ravagers glitch through the or no mobs glitch through the top here, uh, you could just go ahead and do some strings just like this. I don't know why I call it a strings. Again, I'm using weird terminology for the things that I'm doing. And then now to make sure that the raids cannot spawn up here, we're just going to throw down leaves. Now for aesthetics, if you like, I don't know why I like doing this, but sometimes I do. If you want to be able to like see in here, here we go. We can put glass blocks right here. That's fine. It won't affect anything negatively. Um, it'll the mobs will still get pushed in just the same, but it can be used for aesthetics or maybe just like to be able to peek inside your farm to make sure it's working right. Feel free to do something like this. Just make sure it's something like a full size block, like a glass block. Don't put like panes or uh, trap doors or anything like that here, because at that point it would be possible for the raid to spawn inside of them. Now we need to collect our items from this. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, what you're going to want to do is come directly underneath and you're going to place a hopper two blocks down like that. And then actually, you know what? No, we're going to make one facing sideways. So as long as it's under any of these four center blocks, it's fine. Go ahead and place a rail on top of that hopper, place a hopper with minecart down there. You can break the rail to set that down properly. And if you want to make sure that your hopper minecart cannot get bumped around in any way, Go ahead and surround it with solid blocks just like that. Now we're going to want to drop items into a storage system. We do not want items to be anywhere in this general area um, or like our storage system because then we have to cover everything with leaves, right? So what we can do is we can come over three, four. We're going to put a dropper right here and we're just going to lead our hoppers over to that dropper like this. Keep in mind that anything you have like this, you either need to put leaves on top of it, or if you want, you can cover it with a solid block that makes it so nothing there is spawnable. There's no space for a mob to spawn. Um, and then we are going to want our items to shoot out and go down. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to use leaves because again, the leaves are not spawnable. So I don't have to worry about covering anything. And we do need to take a redstone signal out of this dropper right here. Let's do this. Let's actually bring this dropper down by one and actually let's bring it down by two. That by two would be even better. It's just going to make the redstone part a little bit easier for you guys to manage. So we're going to do that. 
um, it'll be shooting items in this direction like this, which is fine. Uh, but we do need to take a redstone signal out of this dropper. What we're going to do is build a little platform just like this. And we do want it anytime it has even a singular item in here for it to pull a signal out. So we'll put a, um, a comparator right here, a repeater right here, run redstone across like this, turn that on and put the redstone dust right here. Now, anytime a single item is in there, it shot it out. Now, all of this is spawnable right now, so we do need to cover it. So just doing this right here, it's not spawnable anymore. Uh, we want to make sure that these items do fall directly down into a particular spot. So if I can bring this down just a few more spots, just to make sure that everything is kind of lined up properly. And we'll, we're even going to take a trap door and place it right here, just like that. One minor correction. I wanted to insert this. I've kind of figured it out after the fact. Some items, the way I had to set up before, were actually getting stuck up top. So minor change, instead of the trap door, put a glass block right here. And all you need is a few blocks around it to keep the items from shooting out the sides. One block down in front of it. You'll kind of see here at this orientation while this thing is running, how it shoots items out. So this is getting close to done. We need a place for our villager to go. And our villager bed needs to be within 12 blocks of where we stand. So we'll probably make it 10 blocks just to kind of keep things safe, right? So if we're at, we're at Y level 115 here. The Y level 125 is where we want our villager to go. So right here. We're going to have a little like villager chamber somewhere right about here should be fine. And in this case, we have a village right there. I'm going to show you a super easy way on Bedrock Edition to move villagers right there. They always stay centered. They hit that block right there and they go straight down the exact same spot every single time. Now, make sure you give yourself a decent sized landing platform. Something this ish size should be good. Also, for this trick to work, you're going to need to have an elytra already. If you don't have an elytra already, you're going to have to use another method like rails or like a bubble column or something like that to get the villager up this high. But if you do have an elytra, this way is going to be super, super, super easy. Step number one, grab a boat. Oh, I just started a raid over here. That's not that's not good at all. That is not good. Don't do that. Don't do that if it happens. Make sure you don't have the bad omen effect before you go into a village. As I was saying, step number one, we need one villager inside of a boat. Place boat down, swim it on, on land over to a villager. They're going to run away from you. Scoop one up, get away from other villagers because you don't need more than one. So you don't want more than one villager. Step number two, attach lead to boat. Step number three, pillar up incredibly high. Step number four, villager likes bungee jumping. Okay, once you've gotten a decent ways higher in your platform, um, you're going to want to make sure you jump off. Make sure the villager's not like out towards the back when you do. You want to make yourself kind of safe, like pillar yourself out like this. And then with your elytra on, jump and slow glide. Now to slow glide, you, you're going to kind of look up a little bit. So see how I am right now? I'm looking up. I don't want to make any sudden movements. Any sudden movements, that villager, he's going to go flying. And you want to make sure you're right over top of your platform and my villagers, he's gone. Don't do it like that. 100% did not spawn egg him in there. Nope, no spawn egg. And a lot of times what you would normally do is you would put a block right over top of the villager's head just like that. We can get rid of this platform actually now. Don't need this. Nowadays though, don't do that because the villagers, once the next uh, Minecraft Bedrock update hits, they're going to shoot fireworks up. They don't see this as a solid block above their head and they're, they're going to blow themselves up. So you do one of two things. You can either remove that and then have something at least 10 blocks above their head so they don't blow themselves up. Or they will not shoot the fireworks off if they see a solid block above their heads. So you can put a solid block like this and then do a leaf on top of it. Now, now he won't blow himself up. We also do need a bed over here. So what we can do is we can just place this down right here. Remember, we want to be 10 blocks above specifically where the bed is. So 125 would be good. So maybe something like right here. Don't put it so close to the villager to where they can stand in it or sleep in it. So like, don't put it right here in the corner. Grab a bed. You actually, you can't place a bed down on leaves. I just thought about that. So do something like this. Place your bed down. Knock out those blocks. Do not leave those solid blocks there. Pillagers will spawn on it. And then place this here. Place this here because they can also spawn on top of the bed. The bed is now spawn proof. Make sure that i mean it's okay to have this hole here because the scaffolding is the next block down so that's fine 
this thing should, in theory, be ready to go. So, to start it out, what you're going to want to do, you want to make sure you have a looting three sword because that gets you the looting effect. Also, you're gonna want an item sorter of some sort down here. First of all, we can we can punch this hole down as far as we wanna go. So like, if I wanna, if I wanna bring it all the way down here and like build it underneath the pillager tower, this is what I did on the survival empire world, you can do that. And you could simply just do something like this. This hole leads all the way up to where our items were falling before, down that little chute. So the items, they'll fall all the way down here. They'll go into a, like any regular, item sorter so this is the one i typically use i'm not going to show how to make it here i have tutorials on it i have uh videos of me making it in all of my uh, bedrock guide series so you can check those out or you can use your favorite one from any of your favorite creators any item sorter will do you'll sort out things like emeralds probably a few rows for them arrows those are the two main things that drop a lot Outside of that, you get some witch drops, so things like gunpowder, glowstone dust, glass bottle sticks, things like that. If you want to sort them out too, you can. Um, and then at the very end, you could have a single item sorter or a non-stackable item sorter or filter. It's basically works, you, at least mine, works the same way as a normal item filter. You just move it up one block higher, so something like that would be a non-stackable item filter um, you can look the videos up on those as well it'll shoot items down into a trash can to destroy them or you can collect them and then if you want to have overflow protection a trash can at the end whatever i just wanted to give you a basic idea concept or design around item collection um, it's going to have a lot of non-stackable items you're going to get armor and weapons and totems and potions and all of these different things so having some way to sort them out separately and then throw away the rest is probably a good idea right so um, you may even have like a row where you don't sort anything like, hey, I'm going to have all the extra junk come into this row right here. It'll drop in without a filter and then anything extra after all of these chests are full, then it'll get sorted out here. So a few different ideas there for you as well. So if we did all this right, we should be able to turn on this trident killer and kill these guys. None of them are captains yet, so we will not get the um, bad omen effect yet. But if we go up here. They can still spawn down there. We would climb up in here. Oh, oh, we do need to turn this one on as well. Where's my power switch? Bam. Get that one on as well. Give yourself some scaffolding or something to get up to that. And then if we drop ourselves in here and wait a few moments, we should get the uh, bad omen effect. And I recommend doing this too while we wait. It's possible. Although it shouldn't happen. We should be far enough away. But if we want to make sure just to be extra safe that no um, Vex can get us because Vex do get spawned by the, uh, what's it called? By the, whatever he is, the sorcerer dude. I'm not gonna remember the name. It'll get added in in editing, I promise. Uh, we should be able to stand here. Trident killer's running. The raid is starting. And if a Vex does happen to get summoned in, it'll get caught in those boats right there. Ooh, as you can see, they're getting killed. Also, don't make a mistake like me and leave a hole for pillagers to get trapped in. Now, after that, we should be safe to sit here. And let's go through, let's sit through a few raids. Watch this thing happen. Oh, where do our items drop? We can watch our items like drop down too. Oh, they're this side. <laughs> Look at them go. Now, the reason I'm not collecting XP from up there, by the way, these farms really don't give a lot of XP. Like you can wait a hole overnight and you might get from like zero to 30 levels. It's not a ton. There's better ways to get XP. If you want to get XP, there's different ways you can do Trident Killers to, to filter it to you. I'll let you look that up on your own. I didn't care about XP on mine. It's not that big of a deal. It wasn't it wasn't anything exciting. Now, once the raid is over, like it is, victory, we won. We got the Hero of the Village effect. Now, again, when a new update comes out, that's when that villager, he would send off the fireworks. But since we have a solid block above his head, he won't send those fireworks off. We won't have to worry about it. And this process will just keep repeating because down bottom there, you have the pillager captains keep getting killed over and over again because they keep spawning in. They continue to give us the raid effect and a new raid is starting up. We can AFK here forever and ever and ever and get unlimited amount of emeralds until our storage system fills up, which it fills up really fast. Again, make sure that you make that item filter for non-stackable items because i'm telling you it's going to get clogged up you can have 50 chests they're going to be filled in no time they really will so it's a good part to add in for sure i'm going to sit here at the raid farm and get some materials even though i don't need any because this is a creative test world for 
the raid farm. But I'm going to do it anyways because I like seeing them up, the bar go up and down. And there you have it. That's the raid farm. It's very simple to build. Extremely. It doesn't take a lot of blocks. You could probably even find a way to decorate this thing and make it look cool up in the air if you wanted to. If that's something that you care about. You could get rid of the scaffolding here to go up and you could fly in and just land at the top instead. Um, I don't believe... I've AFK'd here a while. I haven't seen any Vexes, so I don't believe that these boats are necessary. Feel free to leave them there for a little while just to make sure on your own before you remove them. Um, but I've AFK'd here a couple hours. Not a single Vex has come out. I think because when we're down here, we're far enough away to where the Vex don't even get summoned. So we're good on that front. And hopefully everybody enjoyed the farm. If you did, please go ahead, click the like button to show the whole world, all of YouTube, that you enjoyed the video. Uh, clicking the like button gets the video shown to more people, so it helps out a lot. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the Survival Empire series where I actually created this farm for the first time and had a lot of fun doing it, as well as the other amazing things that happened in that series. And I'll check you next time. Bye! Does the looting three effect work on viewers? I don't know. We'll have to set up a farm for that too.